topic uh, is intelligent infrastructure. Uh, we're very grateful to ITRON, our sponsor for this session. Um, and our panelists are Timothy Papandreou, who's Deputy Director for Sustainable Streets uh, at the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency. To his immediate right, we have uh, Lyndon Rive, who's Chief Executive of Solar City. And at the far right, we have uh, Russ Vanos, who is Senior Vice President, Strategy and Business Development at ITRON. So thank you to my panelists. Uh, let me turn to, um, to Russ for a moment, because what your company does is really think about how to integrate these things, what the, what the Brits in the room would uh, call joined up thinking. Can you give us uh, a sense of you know, what, this idea of smart cities, and again, the broader rubric, it's not only cities, uh, we can start with that, but intelligent infrastructure. To me, smart cities is about everything being connected, and, it, and it's communities, right? It, I mean, we, we talk cities, but it's really communities, and communities are people. And so we're all trying to strive to have a richer life, and we're all trying to strive to, to leave the world in a better place for the next generation. In my case, I've become real passionate on it in the last five years because i got a five-year-old granddaughter. So I really start to think about the world differently today and what kind of world is Riley going to have. And will she have kind of the same kind of social capabilities that we have? So, you know, you think about the exploding population in the, in the world today, and you think about a couple of principles like water is vital. You know, we don't have water. We don't have life without water. And you think about what really differentiates communities. It's access to low-cost, reliable electricity. It's really what differentiates cities that are growing and, and, and blooming from decaying cities. And so to me, it's all about connecting the infrastructure, whether it's, whether it's meters and edge devices like sensors, things to, to measure and inject renewables into our grid. It's things like being able to make sure that all of the water we manufacture, if you think about it, you know, water, water we manufacture, we all think that it's free and that it's a God-given right, but we have to pay a lot of money to, to manufacture water and to deliver that water. Well, in the United States, which is the most efficient economy in the world around delivering water, 35% of the water that we manufacture never gets delivered to anybody or to any of us. So think about the loss, the inefficiency in that. Think about the cost in that the cost to all of us. So the more we can interconnect, I think we would, in fact, leave the world you know, better for my granddaughter at least. So. One comment I want to make about the water is, uh, not, most people don't know this, but the average household uses more water in the creation of their electricity than water consumption itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like mind-blowing you think about yeah. that. Yeah. Talking about now uh, grid-connected micropower with multi-directional flows, and with smart management, sensors, real-time meters, that can manage this power as appropriate. This is the vision for the much smarter grid, as I understand Exactly, it. and just to get to a point where you're gonna have storage devices becoming more cost-effective. So with the evolution of cell phones, and then now with uh, electric vehicles, there's a tremendous amount of uh, uh, innovation occurring in reducing the cost of batteries. You look at the battery cost four or five years from now, which is not so far away. In, in terms of your energy uh, lifetime, four or five out of 100 years is, is not much you're going to have local storage that's cost effective. So now you can have uh, solar production that uh, you can access and go into the, the storage. You then need to have a grid administrator that can essentially have access to all these devices, release the power whenever they want it, and control it all. This is not that hard to do. Then it gets back to the other point, is what's the obstacle? So the obstacle uh, that we are seeing is that when you have an industry that is 100 years old, and hasn't needed to change, has never had competition. Nothing can force innovation at a greater level than competition, not even close. So when you don't have competition, what is your innovation level? It's a tiny. So now when you have a 100-year monopoly that's preventing, that, that sees this disruptive change, this business model is going to be changing. The old way of doing things is going to change, and they're going to do whatever they can to slow that down or prevent it. I share his views on this, but I got to make a couple com comments. I agree with his comments about the monopoly and that our electricity system hasn't changed in 100 years. It looks exactly the same way it did 100 plus years ago. Uh, but I don't think that the average utility executive, there are some of them out there, but I don't think the average utility executive sits around and says, I love my, not my monopoly and I don't want to change. I think our regulatory model is broken because it doesn't incent them. In fact, it incents them to do to put money into capital rate base. It doesn't incent them to change. And yet, our consumers, us, 
are not very well educated about that. And so there's a real danger there that, in, in fact, we get excited about, you're right, damn it, we should build microgrids everywhere and do solar and all kinds of renewables, and we're just going to break up the util utility monopoly. That's wonderful, but expect that your little grid will be your little neighborhood, and when the power goes out, it goes out, and you won't be able to buy any from you know, the Northwest, we ship you guys lots of power. Or when the, the clouds come in on a sunny day on solar, you won't have access to storage because there won't be any, any way to innovate. But you're absolutely right. It's got to be innovation that will spark it, and it's got to be in, incented. And it's really, it's really all of us that will change it, yeah. working with our regulators. But we have to become more educated about how this is all interconnected. Everybody talks about big data. So I think the, the real trick for government is we're going to have, especially if we interconnect everything, we're going to have so much access to data. It's not going to be about data. It's going to be about information. And pretty soon it's not going to be about information. It's going to be about knowledge and action. And so we need to enable this developer app world to get access to that data and actually take action so we can take some of the pressure off of government and let them do the real value add stuff. We're involved in a very large uh, scale water project in Mumbai. And uh, what we're really doing there is we're bringing water to parts of Mumbai that have never had it before on a reliable basis, wow. which means infrastructure, building out infrastructure, lots of money associated with that. So you have to work with entities like the World Bank. It, around social media, I mean, all those people even though they didn't have water or they may not have electricity, they all have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. They're actually implementing metering technology and communications technology and they're putting apps out there. Now, that sounds crazy because these are people who can't afford to have three meals a day. But you know what? They have that phone and it'll enable them to be able to buy water, kind of prepay water and say, you know what? I'm going to buy this much water and they'll get a, a message when, when the water's running out. You have the same capability on the electric side. It sort of changes the whole social aspect of water and says if you, you know, if you want water, it's sort of not your God-given right, but you have access to water. It's your responsibility, back to your earlier point, to manage that, not mine as city government or local government. Uh, this was a great workshop. Uh, thank you all for participating so energetically. Give our panel a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas.